beautiful people, welcome back. I hope you guys are all having a beautiful day today, and I hope that you are ready to go through my 2020 high-end makeup favorites, because y'all, I have got some doozies in here. I am so excited. I know I've said it before, but I will say it again. I take these videos very seriously, okay? Do you see the intensity in my eyes right now? Because for me, these videos, they're, they're not just about the makeup, okay? They are about the recap, the, the evolution of my makeup throughout the year, and I think throughout all the years that I've been doing this, this is my third or fourth, fourth year on YouTube now, and I think for me, 2020 has by far been the biggest transformation, like in terms of how I like to do my makeup, the products I reach for. And so going through for this year, it was definitely a little bit, you know, more special because I can actually see as I pick up the products, like, oh wow, this one made me love cream products or this one made me love this type of brow and stuff like that. And all of this is just to say that I talk a lot, number one, and number two, there is a ton to get through. So this video is gonna be a little on the longer side, which I mean, all of my videos are a little on the longer side. Who are we kidding? Um, so just make sure you have something to drink, something to eat if you like snacks. I love snacks. Uh, and just make sure that you're ready because we are going to go through so much. I'm gonna have a ton of information. As per usual with my videos, I will make sure everything that I talk about to the best of my abilities is linked down below, which for the purposes of this video, I actually made sure that everything I'm wearing is something I'm gonna be talking about today. That way, when I go through the description box, I'm just gonna go ahead and put like an asterisk or a symbol or something next to it. That way you guys know, you know, what I'm wearing and I don't have to put it down there twice because we're only allowed 5,000 characters and it's already gonna be a tight fit with all this. So keep that in mind. I'll have, you know, just like a little symbol next to it. And then as far as the top goes, I know I'm gonna get questions because y'all, this top is so damn cute. It's a crop little faux turtleneck. I got it from Fabletics, of course. And uh, this isn't sponsored. I don't work with Fabletics yet, yet. You guys, I'm manifesting. I am manifesting into the year 2021. Okay, Fabletics, oh my God. Okay, we are going to become friends in the year 2021. I'm just, whew, I'm putting it out unto the universe. And then of course, I'll have the link for Fabletics too if you wanna sign up and you know become a VIP. I know this sounds super sponsored. I promise it's not. It's just my link. Um, I, I've been talking about it for the last, God, like what, year and a half maybe on this channel. And then of course, as per usual, for anybody that might be new here, I like to stop and introduce myself as well. My name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. Welcome to the channel. I put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right around 7, 7.30ish a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. So you have bright early morning uploads three days a week. And then also over on Instagram, if you are new or if you're not familiar, I'll have it linked down below. And I would really, really appreciate it if you check it out. I'm trying to hit 10,000 followers over there. And Instagram for me is kind of the behind the scenes. It's where I like to go and do everything from, you know, walks, I take polls, I we, we talk about all kinds of stuff. It's kind of the behind the scenes for my life, if you will, um, and I really enjoy it, especially the unboxings. I feel like the unboxings lately have just been awesome. I, lo I love to go through everything, whether it's PR, I get it from Ulta, whatever. We talk about it in the office, um, and then I kind of get a feel for what you guys want to see. And then also in the feed, I've been completely revamping everything, so we have a lot of, like, plus-size fashion reels and plus-size fashion photos, you know, for, like, the lounge, casual business, casual wares type stuff. I don't really get into, like, the super, you know, intense end of fashion, but I like to be just more like casual everyday type stuff. Um, and then I also, of course, do a lot, a lot of makeup content. There's makeup inspo, makeup reels, makeup uh, tutorials, little mini makeup reviews, and stuff like that. So if you're looking for, you know, just more me, more content, definitely check that out. I will have it linked down below. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and let's get going into the video, you guys. I am so excited. Ugh, I'm so excited. All right, so first up, I'm going to go through and do these in the order that I normally do my makeup. And so I'm going to start off with primer. And we're getting just, you know, right to a hot start because I only have one primer, okay? One high-end primer to talk about. And you guys, that is the Tatcha Liquid Soap Canvas. Like, th this for me has been the, the the 2020 primer to end all primers. I just feel like this lays down such a beautiful um, neutral base for my makeup. Like, it doesn't lean me dewy. It doesn't lead me matte. It doesn't, it doesn't really take me in any direction. Of course, once I discovered this little guy, okay, it was the only primer of the year. Like, yes, I tried a ton, a ton of other primers, and yes, I love them. And, you know, I may have even thrown them in here and there, but this is the primer, okay? This was the primer that when I was testing a foundation, when I was, you know, just doing my makeup on the day-to-day, -day, this was my jam. I just wanted to throw this out here, you know, just as like a, as like a little bonus information. Uh, if you wanted to try the regular silk canvas, if you think this one would work better for you or you like the texture, whatever, uh, this one is also really, really good. It will last a long time, like as far as the amount of products you get. And this one, they actually have a mini of as well. That's like, what, 10 or $15. It's like this big roughly. But again, even the mini will last you a really long time. Going into foundation, I have four that I'm going to talk about today. And these are foundations that I have already talked about a fair amount on this channel. And I did make sure going into this too, that I picked ones that each were a little different. Like I'm not doing, you know, just all like natural finish, just all matte finishes or something like that. Like I really wanted to have options and best ofs that I think would work for, you know, several people. And so going in, I'm actually going to start off with a recent favorite. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Stick Foundation. And I think out of all these stick foundations I have ever tried, this one is by far my favorite. I love the emollient. I love the way it applies. I love 
love, I just, I love the texture of this more than anything and the way that it blends out. The coverage is beautiful. All right, now this one should come as no surprise. I want to say it was like three-ish months ago, maybe. I did a foundation roundup where I went through 10 foundations I had tested recently and I ranked them for you. And if you missed that, I'll link it up here. Again, it has like 10 newer foundations from the year 2020. And in there at the top of my list, at the tippy tippy top were these two foundations, one of which is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Plus Skincare Foundation. And this is a fantastic foundation, you guys. I have used this time and time again, and it really, really is the most natural looking, truly a your skin but better look to it. And I just absolutely love it. It wears amazing throughout the day. And the finish of it, again, it just, it works really beautiful on a more natural makeup day. You can glam it up if you want to. You can build and adjust the coverage. That, of course, is juxtaposed to the other one that I love from that video. And this is the Too Faced Born This Way Matte Foundation. And what I love about this is actually the way that it is a more true matte foundation and it does dry down to the skin, but it isn't the type that gets like overly dry and overly like cakey and cracky. And don't get me wrong, if you pair it with more of a, uh, more of an intense foundation powder or something like that, you can definitely get that. Like th this is a foundation that you have to be mindful regardless of your skin type, how much you set because it doesn't react well to intense powders. And then of course that brings us into the final foundation, the final Mac Daddy, the one I am wearing today and the one that I just talked about in my December year end favorites, which of course I will link up here. If and you missed it, it went up uh, this past Friday or Saturday. It went up a day late. So check that out if you missed it. But uh, that would be none other than the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I have this in the shade Mont Blanc, again, the one I'm wearing today. And you guys, this foundation has been <laughs> such a freaking disaster for me. Like from the very beginning, I'm just, I could tell you over and over again, I hated this foundation. I tried it a ton of times. Again, there's more info if you check my uh, my month end favorites because I go into the whole story. And again, I'm not going to go into everything I talk about in the favorites video, but all I'm going to say with this is that if you have tried it and you absolutely hate it, you're like, oh my God, it doesn't look good or it doesn't last. That was my issue. It looks thick. It looks cakey, whatever. Go back through. Don't be afraid to go back through and try using it a different way, using less product, pressing it in with your fingers, setting it with a different powder, doing a different primer, anything like that. I'm telling you, it will make the biggest difference. All right. So next up, there's only one in the setting spray category. So it is a little out of order, but I'm just going to throw it out there because, you know, I just, I want to get it out the way. This is a big box. Okay. We got to keep it moving. And the only setting spray that I'm going to include in this one is actually the Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. And pause really quick. Okay. If you're like, Paige, there's no way. What about the Airbrush Flawless Filter? Uh, Cause you guys know I use that all the time. What about all of these other high-end sprays? You know, you use them consistently and da 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 da, which yes, I did use those and I did really enjoy them. In the end, what I had to ask myself with those sprays is would I repurchase them? Like at that price, you know, do I, do I love them enough to repurchase them or was I just using them enough to, you know, enough to use up the bottle? And out of all the setting sprays I could think of, this was the one that I kept going back to that I think is not only such a beautiful setting spray, like in terms of the way that it sets your makeup and also the way that it works for so many skin types, all the way from oily to combo to dry and everyone in between. It's just so beautiful, but it's also very, very innovative. I feel like in the way that it works, the way that it actually does give you that nice soft focus veil. Out of all the sprays, I felt like this was the one that was actually different, the one that it really does work for so many people. And I would repurchase this because I think it's amazing. All right, you guys. So next up, we're getting into concealers. And before we get into the actual concealers, I wanted to throw out there an item that I have talked about so many times, one that really did, like it just, it took my world by storm. I'll even go one step farther. Okay, something that I really was convinced I would hate. And that is none other than the Becca Under Eye Brightener. I have this in the shade Light to Medium. And this is a brightener, by the way, that I tried in the Testing Samantha Ravindahl's makeup, which I'll link up here. Uh, I know that I don't, I, I already have used almost all my links, but if there is anything applicable uh, and I have the space down below, I will link them. If not, just search my channel. There is a ton of information. This brightener, it has truly revolutionized the way that my under eyes look, the way that I apply anything down there. I just feel like this, it really does do a great job, not only in terms of like brightening up that area and canceling out this under eye like blue baggage, but also the texture of it and like the way that it builds so beautifully and so seamlessly with my concealer. This is the only under eye product, like a color corrector, brightener, whatever, that I have ever been able to get to work under my eyes, working with concealers and powders that doesn't look thick or cakey or just anything like that. Like this is, it is actually the perfect, <laughs> perfect product for my under eye. All right, so next up from there, I have two spot concealers and three like regular, you know, like face under eye type concealers. And I'm gonna do the spot concealers first because these are so, so damn good. First up is the YSL All Hours Concealer. And this one I use in the shade 0.5. It is the perfect match for my skin tone. It has such a thin, lightweight feeling to it that it just presses in and it has like kind of a, I, I would say like a weightless matte feeling to it. So you don't need to set it. It doesn't move around and it just works so, so beautifully on my skin. 
skin. And then the other one I want to mention is a newer one. Again, I've talked about this recently. This is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I have it in the shade 1 Chantilly. And this is also a beautiful, beautiful spot concealer. It has such a nice, thick emolliency. It's actually interesting because the two of these are very different, where the YSL one is more of like a thin kind of fluid consistency. This one, obviously being potted, is a little bit thicker. It's a little more emollient, but it has like a way that it kind of like I would say settles into and like hugs the texture like when you get acne and stuff like that how sometimes it can be raised and irritated and this does a really nice job of kind of cloaking over top of it and just like keeping it together but not drying out not making it look crepey or crusty or anything like that and it's just a really really beautiful spot concealer now going into the regular concealers I lied I actually have four to talk about and the one is out in the hallway I just repurchased it I've repurchased it I think probably four times at this point and it was an older in 2020 favorite like the first half of the year and that is none other than the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. Okay, this concealer, it is absolute chef's kiss perfection. There's, oh, everything about it is perfect. The, the, the way that it settles into my under eye, the consistency, it has like a kind of a hybrid between a regular creamy consistency and almost having like a gel feature to it. You can really build it up, but you don't have to because the coverage is amazing. And it's just, oh my God, oh, this concealer, it is so good. It's getting into the other concealers I also want to mention. These are three that I would say I've been loving more toward the back half of 2020. Well, you know what, except for this one. This is actually the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Concealer, and this is a new one. I just repurchased it. Uh, this is the shade L2. I have L1, and it's a little bit light for me, uh, but this concealer is absolutely beautiful, and I can't remember if I loved this one in 2020 or not, but the thing about this consistency and the way that it blends out is that the coverage is so, so nice, and it actually has such a seamless, like, feel to it on your skin that when you're looking at it, it carries so much brightness, again, because I go a little bit lighter with the concealer uh, as far as the shade goes, but there, there's a way that the brightness of this and the coverage and everything paired together, the consistency is just so beautiful. And then, of course, we have these two concealers, and they are the two that I've been using nonstop in the last couple of months. Again, if you've watched any of my videos, you know what I'm going to say. First up, we have the Benefits Boing Cakeless Concealer. This is in shade 2. I have used shade 1, 1.52, and 2.5. They were sent to me in PR. And by the way, this is PR. Nothing else, yeah, nothing else that I've talked about so far has been, but this, oh my god, you guys, oh, I didn't even know that this was a concealer that was missing from my life. I love it so much. The texture is thin. It's very lightweight. It's buildable. It works with literally everything, like every powder, every foundation, whatever I'm doing. This is just so, so good. It's so layerable. And again, the consistency of it is just key. So I have to mention it. If you like a thinner consistency, this is beautiful. So then we have the other concealer. And I think out of all of them, this is the one that shocked me the most because I did not expect to like it this much. And that is, of course, the Clinique Even Better All Over Concealer and Eraser. I think think that this concealer, while I absolutely detest this little bouncy fucking spongy thing that I will never use in my life, um, I think the concealer itself is absolutely amazing. The consistency is so beautiful. It's it's more of a medium weight, like it's a little bit thicker than the um, than the Benefit one, but it's not quite as thick as, say, the Hourglass one. So it's definitely right in between, but it has such a smooth blend. It really does, just like the Benefit, really press in. All right, so next up, we're going to get into powders, and I am actually putting my powder foundations in this category because as you guys know, or if you are new here, um, I like to set my face with both regular powder, regular finishing powder, or if I want a little more coverage and a little more staying power, I will use a powder foundation. So I just figured for today, I would lump them all together. And I'm actually gonna start off with the powder I use today because if you watch my favorites video, you know I love pairing with this foundation, the Chantecaille Blurring Powder. This is so, so beautiful. It is, again, not available right now. I've talked about this a billion times, I feel like, at this point, uh, both in my favorites video and in my testing Teresa is Dead's uh, favorite makeup. I feel like what makes this one so special is that I can use it for both um, like a finishing powder just as like a final sweep over to blur everything together, but I can also use it to set my makeup and to get that really beautiful seamless look on my foundation. And it's just a fantastic powder. Highly recommend. Again, this one will not be linked because it's not currently available, but as soon as it is, oh, as soon as it is, bitch, it will be happening. And I am very excited about it. So I wanted to throw that out first. And also, as far as the foundation powders go, I have two to talk about they are two that I have hit pan on both. Um, the first one is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Complexion Powder. I have this in the shade Cloud. It is it is a little bit light for me, but uh, this foundation powder was the one that I reached for the entire first half of 2020. Actually, you know what? This was all I reached for until I got this one from um, It Cosmetics. This is their Celebration Foundation Illumination Press Powder in the shade Light. And this one I actually picked up because I was testing Jessica Braun's favorite makeup, which again, I'll have it linked down below. And this powder is so, so freaking beautiful. 
I love the way that it not only sets the face, it provides a little extra coverage, and it really does have a beautiful lit from within kind of a luminous situation, but it's not the kind that if you're like me and you're oily or combo leaning oily, it's not the kind of lit from within that you're going to see and be like, oh God, like, oh, she's shiny. It's not that. It just gives your skin, like, it just kind of takes away the harshness. You know how sometimes matte can just look very, very harsh on your skin? This just helps take that away and just dial it back a little bit, and it is absolutely stunning. I just, oh, I, I can't recommend it more. I love it. I will repurchase. And then as far as my loose powders go, obviously we have the tried and true hourglass vanishing one. This is their translucent, I'm sorry, their veil translucent setting powder. And this I've loved for years. I don't want to talk about it because I've talked about it again constantly, but uh, this is a fantastic setting powder. So I want to throw that out. I can use it to set the under eyes all over the face, whatever I'm doing, that powder works beautifully. But as far as a new introduction to the family, one that I also just talked about in my December favorites, y'all, this one size setting powder from Patrick Star. This stuff is so damn beautiful on the under eyes. I love it so much. I'm wearing it today. And the way that this works, like the way that it settles down into that area, it really does blur. Like all of these fine lines, this texture, I love it so freaking much. And what I love too, just as a side note with this, if you're wanting to check it out, um, I, I really appreciated that Patrick not only launched it in a full size version, but he also launched it in a smaller one. So if you're wanting to test it and just see if it's for you, like see if you like it, um, that's definitely the route that you can go to and you can save some money. And I just thought that that was cool. Right. So next up going into bronzer, I do have two categories. I've got a couple cream and I have three that are powder and I want to start off with the cream ones. And this one specifically, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood contour wand. And I can't remember if this is a uh, one that, uh, that I did talk about in 2019 or not, but I've loved it for a long time. So I wanted to mention it. And uh, it's actually the one too that I put on today. And I just love everything about this, the way that it blends in the color, the consistency. I think what I love the most, like just from an ironic standpoint is this is arguably one of the easiest, uh, like cream bronzer type products that I've ever come across. And when you first apply it to your face, you're just like, oh God, because it looks, it looks so intimidating. But uh, trust me, just believe in the process, okay? You put this on and you just blend it out. It blends like a dream. And it really does blend out to be the most beautiful shade and the most beautiful depth too. Like in terms of the, uh, the opacity of it, it just buffs right in. It's absolutely beautiful. And the other cream one that I want to talk about is actually from Fenty. This is the Fenty uh, Cheeks Out Cream, Freestyle Cream Bronzer in the shade O2 but a biscuit, which I still think is one of the best names ever. For me from Fenty, uh, between this and their cream blushes, I do think that this was the superior launch. I just love the way that it looks on the skin. Like it has a beautiful kind of lit from within luminosity. I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but when you blend this into your skin, it has like a nice, like a nice dry down to it where it's not thick or like tacky or moving around on your skin. But at the same time, it has a nice amount of just glow to it. Like it's very, very subtle and it makes your skin look so healthy. And I always really love this one too because it just gives you that nice natural like sun kind of luminosity like like I actually know what the sun is I've seen it like it doesn't burn my little white ass to a crisp um this is kind of that look that it gives and it's just such a beautiful beautiful bronzer and then another bronzer that really did surprise me this year this is the Nabla Cosmetics Skin Bronzing Sun Kissed Effect Bronzing Powder in the shade Ambra Ambra <laughs> Abracadabra as I like to say um and this bronzer y'all I went in on this so hard I freaking love this the texture the color the glow to this one is so beautiful it has a nice kind of subtle sheen, very similar to the way that the Fenty cream one does. It just kind of illuminates the cheeks a little bit, gives you that beautiful poppy glow. And then of course the Mac Daddy, the one I don't need to talk about, the one that I have actually not stopped talking about all year, and that is none other than, than this little guy. You see how much I love her? This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in the shade medium. And you guys, I love this bronzer. I love everything about it. It is a matte bronzer, um, so it doesn't have like that glowy look, you know, kind of coming through the skin. But everything about this from the shade, the way that it builds up, the way that it just, it, it really does give you this nice airbrushed kind of matte look, and it's, oh my god, like, I, I cannot praise this enough. All right, you guys, so going into blush, I'm just gonna be honest, I didn't realize that evidently 2020 was the year of the blush, because, bitch, I have so much to talk about, like, just in terms of individual blushes. I'm not talking palette blushes, just individuals. I have 12, 12 that I want to talk about. So what I'm gonna do today is actually go through, and I'm gonna start off with creams. I'm just gonna buzz through these fairly quickly. I'm not going to do a ton of detail because these are products. Obviously, I've talked about them at length already, and I just want to just want to throw them out and kind of move along the way. So the first ones, like I said, one, two, three, four, five, five are cream-ish, and you know we'll kind of we'll kind of get into the ish here in a second. But the first one I want to give a nod to, just like a lot of other people on the internet, this is the Rare Beauty Blush. Now this is the shade Happy. I do have the other shade. I don't remember what it's called. Again, I did do a full video on Rare Beauty, so I will link that down below. But their blushes are so so 
beautiful. The texture of them, they're lightweight. They blend out like a dream. They build, they shear. You can do everything with them. Highly recommend this formula. I love it so, so much. Along those same lines too, I actually really love this one. This is the Grande Pop Plumping Liquid Blush. And this is actually one that I tested out when I was doing, uh, or testing Kathleen Light's favorite makeup, which again, I'll link that, you know, somewhere down below, whatever. But this one for me, I loved the shade. You can see it right there. It's more of just like a, like a true peach kind of pinky pop. And I love the way that when you press this into the skin, it looks so amazing, especially if you're doing like a CC cream or maybe like a light medium coverage kind of look. It just, it has such a nice lilt from within that you actually get from it, but also that color is just so beautiful and it's so unique. And then of course, the one that needs no introduction, this is my Cure Wise blush in the shade Blossoming, another one that I tested out when I did Samantha Ravindahl's favorite makeup. And this blush is so, so beautiful. Like, I, oh my God, when I, when I think of 2020 cream blushes, I think of this cream blush because it is so, so good. It's very expensive. The packaging is super duper luck, but this blush, you guys, the color of it, the texture, the way that it presses in, I really, I cannot recommend this enough. I feel like Cure Wise for me was such a fun find in the year 2020. And that blush was just, oh, it was like the gateway to all the other cream things that I didn't know I needed. I love it so, so damn much. And then finally getting into the hybrid and also the one I'm wearing on my face today, we have the Patrick Ta blush duo. This is the She's, this is in the shade She's That Girl. And for today, I did of course go in with the cream, which is right here. And then of course the powder over top. And I freaking love this blush, you guys, which will also lead me into the other one from Patrick Ta that I love, his regular uh, monochromatic blushes. If you don't like the creams, if you don't have a use for them, these ones are so beautiful. And this shade specifically, huh, it's just amazing. This is in the shade She's Passionate. And I, well, bitch, bitch, I will tell you right now, okay, she is passionate about this damn shade. It is so, so beautiful. They just, they really have that nice pressed in look. Again, more of like a finishing powder kind of blush. They're amazing. And then this one, I'm just going to put it in here. I don't know if I talked about this one also in 2019 or not, but I have to give a nod to the Cover FX blush duos. I am freaking obsessed with these. I have all of them and I use them so much at the beginning of 2020. They've got that nice duality. You can have, you know, more matte. You can add that shimmer, that shine for like a blush topper. It's just, oh, these are so good. Again, the texture is fantastic. Another one that was somewhat similar to that, but also not really, uh, would be the Wayne Goss blush duos. And this is another one too that I purchased all the shades of it. I love them so much. It has a matte side blush over here. And then it also has more of like a highlight shade on this side. And this one is in the shade Blush Peony, by the way. I love this one and Coral Rose. Those are my two favorites. These are so good because they really do mix seamlessly. Oh my God, and this blush is so smooth. Um, but these are great because when you're looking at them and you think, wow, like that's going to be an intense highlight. You swatch it on your hand and it really does pop off. So if you want to use them as a blush and a highlight, you can definitely do that. And it's beautiful. But I personally think that the way that these shine and the way that they just look so amazing on the skin is to mix the two together, which is something obviously when Wayne created it, that was part of, you know, part of his whole thing here was that these are all designed to literally layer and mix these shades, whether you want to use, you know, this one just draping over top of this one, if you want to dip back and forth into both and mix them that way, they just, they pair so beautifully together. My final three blushes in this video are more on the luminous side, so they give you that nice glow, and they're a little bit more, I don't want to say intense with the glow, but that's definitely like a built-in element of them, and I am going to start off with the Nabla Cosmetics. This is in the shade Iola, and I also have the other shade. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll have it listed down below if I can remember what it is. But these blushes from Nabla, they are so, so, so good. Just like I was saying about the bronzer, the texture is fantastic. The glow is so beautiful. And these ones really do a nice job at popping the cheek. Uh, of course, same thing here with this one, which how many times, how many times have y'all heard me talk about this Buzzkill blush from uh, Melt Cosmetics? These are so good, okay? I love the packaging. I love the way they look, the little bee. I personally think this is one of the most beautiful shades of blush I have ever come across. I love it. I I love the way that the lilt hits my cheek, especially, ooh, especially pairing this one over top of that Grande Pop one because that's more of a peachy color. This just looks so good. It has, again, more of that poppy color to it, more of that peach, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And then the other one that I love, again, talked about it a ton. This is the Heaven's Glow Magic Hour Blush from M Cosmetics. And M Cosmetics was another one of those brands for me that just came out of the woodwork and I freaking fell in love with their formulas. This blush, I love to use it more as like, um, like, like a nice glow glowy blush topper. I think it looks beautiful that way. It really does just brighten up and kind of awaken the whole cheek. Veils over top. Super, super beautiful. I also just saw one more sitting in the drawer that uh, was supposed to be with the matte blushes. And I wouldn't be me, okay? I wouldn't be me if I didn't mention this because this is a blush. This is, she is, she is small, but she is mighty, my friend. This is the Chantikai cheek, uh, cheek blush in the shade Emotion.
collection, which is the one that actually comes embossed with a little B, which of course you can't see because bitch, I have used it all to death. And this freaking blush, you guys, I love it. I love the color. I love the texture. Same with all of them. I know you're sick of me repeating that at this point. Also one more cream blush, and I'm actually going to use this as a segue because I forgot about it, but we're getting into highlights. So I'm just going to use this as the bridge. And if you have not checked out the Rituel de Fil, or however, however you say that name, I'm so sorry. I always pronounce it wrong. I've been butchering it since I first purchased it and talked about it on Instagram. Uh, but their cream blushes and their cream highlights, you guys, so, so freaking fantastic. This one right here is actually the highlight in the shade Ice Bow. It is their Rare Light Creme Luminizer. And I am obsessed with these. I think that they look so, so beautiful. The way that they press into the skin, you can see a little swatch right there. It's just more so like a, like a light kind of lilt to the skin. For me personally, when it comes to highlight, I am freaking obsessed with this one paired with their other shade. This is the, uh, the Alchemist Highlight Intensifier. And this one right here, bitch, this highlight will just rock your world, honey boo boo. Okay, I'm just gonna put it right over top of the other one. Look at how freaking beautiful. It is so glowy, so stunning. I will say for me, because of the texture being a little bit tacky with this, I do have to be careful because I set my, um, I do set down my entire face, obviously with powder. But what I like to do with this is kind of take a little bit here on my finger and I like to lightly just tap it off onto my hand and then I'll ever so gently take it and just kind of skim the top of my cheekbone and like, look, look at, I barely tapped it. And it is such a beautiful, beautiful product. Now, in terms of cream highlights, I do have one other one I want to talk about. And this is the Rare Beauty uh, Liquid Luminizer in the shade Enlighten. And this one I just think is really special because of the consistency. I think ob like obviously the color of it and like the, the glowiness is great. And I love just putting this on the high points of my face underneath of my foundation because I feel like it gives me that amazing lit from within glow. But at the same time, the texture of it is so nice and thin. It's barely, barely detectable. And then in terms of powder highlights, I'm actually going to lead in with this little guy from Chantikai. I love saying that. It'll never get old. Um, this is their luminescent eye shade in the shade Cheetah. And it is a warm champagne -y color. Again, technically it is an eye shade. So it's meant, you know, it's, it's meant for being up on your lids. But I am absolutely obsessed with this as I love that my entire palm is glowy. And I'm trying to show you what this looks like. Paige, it's not gonna work. Ooh, honey, baby, look at that. Just look, ooh, just look at this shade, you guys. I, I love this so much. I will put it all over the eyes, all over the face. I use it as a highlighter all the time. And I think it is such, such a beautiful shade. So I wanted to mention it. And then of course, I have to mention this one. This was another favorite from the first part of 2020, the Nabla highlighter. This is in the shade Ozone. And I feel like for everybody else, this highlight was huge, huge in uh, the year 2020. But for me, oh my God, look at that. I just put a stripe of it down the center of my hand. It is so, so beautiful, super reflective. And the texture, again, just like their bronzer, just like their blush, it is so fantastic. It's super forgiving on the skin, especially if you have texture like up in this area. Absolutely gorgeous. And then, of course, last but not least, the one that I am wearing today, the one that really took me by surprise, this is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Glow Highlighter. And this one, again, I'll be honest, I didn't expect to like it this much because not only is the shade a little bit dark, I swatched it right here. Yeah, it's, it's actually the darkest of all the three I just watched. But uh, for me, what won me over with this, not only is the color really beautiful, very, very catching and very vibrant, I feel like, in real life, but it also has an amazing, amazing texture to it. It's super thin. It just buffs into my skin. All right, now going into brows, there has definitely been, definitely been a ton, a ton of items that I have loved this year. I, I feel like really for me, my brows have transformed more than anything else, like in terms of my makeup routine, because I really did go from liking a more like structured, a more pencil type brow into a nice fluffy brow, like going into that flick type action. So I'm actually going to start off with the two products that were I was the most obsessed with in 2020 by far. And that would be my Benefit Brow Pencil and my Benefit Gimme Brow. This is the Precisely My Brow. Uh, so it's actually the one that has a smaller pencil lead to it. By the way, both of these were sent to me in PR. But, but when I tell you, okay, I did not expect to die hard fall in love with them the way that I did, you guys. These are so, so good. I love the Gimme Brow. It's so nice and so fluffy. And especially for me, as someone who had never really like been in love, I'll say, with a brow gel, I feel like this one really did show me like how voluminous and how fluffy my brows really could get. And it's just such a beautiful, beautiful product. The pencil is amazing. They're creamy. 
me, but I just really do enjoy the way that um, their products, they all go together. You know, whether you're using this one, the Precisely My Brow, or the Gimme Brow, or if you wanted to use their um, their microblade pen, like whatever you want to use, I feel like all of the Benefit products just work so beautifully and so seamlessly together. And I also want to give a head nod to this one from Patrick Ta. This is his Tinted Sculpting Gel, which is not the same as the Gimme Brow from Benefit. Like, I would consider them to be two totally different things. Um, I think that this one, which by the way, I use it in the tinted version. There's also a clear version if you prefer that. But for me, this one from Patrick Ta ended up being a brow product that I tried that made me want to try other applications, if that makes sense. And I'm actually going to lay out this order of events, okay? I fell in love with that Gimme Brow Brow Gel and the fluff and the volume that it had. And then once I tried this one from the Patrick Cha, the shaping gel, it actually made me want to, like, I, I feel like it gave me the desire to fluff and give my brows more dimension, if that makes sense. And I just realized with all of these products and, you know, going through and combining them, that there really is such a beautiful simplicity and a nice fluffy brow, which is <laughs> what I'm rocking right now. I'm actually wearing this today. And I guess for me, it was just like the year for 2020 where I realized that my brows don't have to be just like straight up, <laughs> like two dimensional, like plastered to my damn face because going in with all these things, I was able to get the volume, the lift, the this, the that. And it just, I don't know, it made brows a little bit more fun, a little more mobile on my face. Also guys, I just found that cream blush, the one that I couldn't find from the Retour de Fil, the cream one. Uh, this is in the shade Lovesick. It's the one, the one that again, I couldn't find 10 seconds ago. So, you know, found that. That's exciting. I, I thought it was lost forever. All right. So next up, we're going to start getting into eyes and this is going to be, be arguably a very daunting task. So I'm going to do my best to just kind of bullet point through these. I think I've been talking at this point for over 40 minutes. So yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do something to trim up this video. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're just going to bullet point through them. But we're going to start off with none other than mascara. And for this section, I actually only pulled one high-end favorite. And it's because when I think about all of my high-end favorites, when I think about all the mascaras that I tried, this is the one that really, like it not only shocked me, but I would also repurchase it. And I absolutely freaking love it. I'm wearing it today. And you guys, that is the Chantecaille mascara. I still don't know uh, what this is actually called. I'll have it linked down below. But this is, first of all, such an expensive mascara. I think it's like $70 or something like that. But I believe, to my recollection, this actually has like a shaping wax in it. And it does a beautiful job really pulling up the lashes, holding them in place. And I just freaking fell in love with this. I've used it again over and over and over again. It's such a beautiful consistency. The texture is fantastic. And as far as high-end mascaras go, like I, I would actually repurchase this, which says a lot. And now getting into actual eyeshadows, I'm going to go ahead and start off first with the individual products, not palettes, but just like individual, you know, tubs or liquids and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into these two specifically because I feel like I have just beat these products to death this year. But uh, on my eyes, I am wearing the following. Okay, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in the shade Marie Antoinette. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, if you have not used this before, it is so good. The texture is amazing. This for me was like the gateway into the Eyes to Mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury. And because of it, I actually went and picked up, I want to say like three or four other shades. And I really love it as per usual with a little bit of the Hourglass Scattered Lights. This is in the shade Smoke. And all of these from Hourglass, just like the Eyes to Mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury, are absolutely amazing. They really have such a beautiful, as the name would suggest, scattered light kind of sparkle to your eye. And pairing these two together looks absolutely beautiful, just doing that one in the center of the lid. It is so, so, so beautiful. The combo is quick. It's easy. It literally, going in with the two of these, it takes me like, what, maybe three minutes to do both eyes and I'm done. And I feel like my eyes have such a beautiful amount of dimension. They have lilt. They have sparkle. They have depth. Like, they, they just have everything you could ever want. And I love them both so much. And then recently joining the party, which I am wearing on the inner portion of my eye right here, is of course the Elsie Jewel Pot. This is in the shade Pearl. And I did just talk about this in my favorites video as well from December of 2020. So I'm not going to get into it, but it is beautiful. It is bright. It is reflective. And I fell in love with this one when I tested Taylor Wynn's favorites as per usual. And now I do have a couple of other little eye products that I want to mention. You guys, these from Natasha Denona, these are the liquid eyeshadows. I'm sorry, the chrome, chromium liquid eyeshadows. And I have them in three different shades. And these are so freaking stunning. I love everything about them. I love the texture, the build, just the way that they come across. Oh my God, look at that. Like, are you kidding me. These are so gorgeous. What shade is this? This one is in Scarab. And you guys, I have to give a shout out to Chaos Makeup. I picked up three of their individual little multi-chrome shadows and I have, huh, I have literally never seen anything like this. This is in the shade Rebel Girl and I actually used, oh my God, 
Ah, uh, this is, I'm sorry, do you see, do you see this? All right, so I do have a couple of face palettes as well that I wanted to just, you know, throw in here, and I thought this would be a good time, and I'm gonna start off with none other than the Scott Barnes. You guys, I was obsessed with Scott Barnes at the first part of 2020. I went ham. I bought the brushes. I bought these. I just, I went just damn, damn ass hog wild, okay? And I fell in love. I feel like his highlighter palette out of all three is probably my favorite, but I really love his formula for that as well as for his bronzers and his blushes. I think that his uh, blushes were for me probably the second area I reached for again because I can mix and match a little bit more and then of course last but not least we have his bronzer palette and this one for me is probably the only one that I don't know that I would advise like a quote-unquote maybe a normal person picking up because you are going to have so many shades in here that you really can't use because of course unless you have clients you're only trying to fit like your own skin tone but the formula nonetheless is super beautiful and then I also wanted to uh, mention these other three here this is the Danessa Myricks Lightwork palette and I believe she came out with another version of this, a deeper tone version, and this palette is absolutely stunning, you guys. It's so good, and I did do a full video on Danessa Myrick's Beauty testing out, like, everything from her site, so again, if I can link it, I will do so down below, but this palette is so nice. I love her highlights. They're bright. They're beautiful, and also in terms of highlight, too, I know that it's not currently being made, so I can't link it, but I would be a liar, okay, if I didn't mention this. This is the Jaclyn Hill Highlighter Palette, and I have it in The Flash, which I believe was the lightest, and you guys, this one, like, Jacqueline, could you please, could you please just come back out with this so that way everyone can have it and experience it? Because this highlighter, this formula, everything about it, it is absolute perfection. I love it. I love the glow. It melts into your skin and it is so beautiful. Like highly, highly recommend if and when it ever comes back into stock. Packaging is so gorgeous, Jacqueline. I know, I know that like, you know, you got some shit going on, but like, girl, could you just maybe, could you just maybe get on this so the world can experience it? Because it is great. And then of course, last but not least, y'all didn't really think I was going to come up in here and forget, okay? Forget the love of my blush ass life. And that is the Moon Prism Blush Palette from Manny MUA. Again, sent to me in PR. Don't care. This blush palette, it sold out in like four minutes for a reason. And I think it's actually sold out twice now, maybe. It might be in stock. Of course, if it is, I'll link it. But you guys, his blush palette formula, it is so, so good. It is buttery. It melts. It just, it gives you the most smooth, most fantastic looking cheek that you have ever done see. What did I just say that you have ever done see? Okay. All right, you guys. So we are finally into the home stretch, and I am on to lips. And for this section, I'm going to briefly kind of run through some favorites. And I'm actually going to start off with lip pencils because for me, this lip pencil, like out of all the ones I tried this year, you know, obviously I've got my Buxoms. I have the ones that I love year after year. But the Patrick Ta lip liners for me, I'm wearing the one, which one is this? This is She's Bold today. And I freaking love his lip liners. There's something about the way that they look on the lips. They have a natural, but like also, like, like, like somehow they belong on your lips kind of feel, if that makes sense. And I just love them. I love his colors. I love his color and his choice for literally everything that he's come out with. In terms of lips, I just think it's super beautiful, but I wanted to give a big head nod to these. I also really, really do love, while we're on the topic, I don't have one in here, but I also love his liquid lipsticks. I have that one in my purse and his bullet formula is beautiful as well. And of course, per usual, I've got to mention the Manny Lunar Beauty ones. These glosses are an all-time favorite of mine. Not going to go into detail about it, but it's it doesn't, oh, excuse me, <laughs> quite on set. Um, it doesn't matter which shades you grab. They're all super beautiful. The formula is fantastic. Oh, and also too from Patrick Ta, by the way, this is his gloss in the shade She's Expensive. And I have used, I would say about four fifths of this gloss. Okay, like if you took the, the little stick out of it, bitch, she's almost empty. And that is because this gloss is so beautiful. Texture and everything, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Also, I wouldn't be me if I didn't at least give a little head nod here to the Fenty glosses. I love them so freaking much. Oh, another one that I fell in love with was Rare Beauty. This is the Lip Cream and I also have the Thankful Dewy Lip Balm, and I think there's one more, like a um, what is it? It's like a, oh shit, like a blotted lip or something like that from them. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll have it all linked down below. But these are so, so good, you guys. Rare Beauty, the texture, it is fantastic. It's a very light, kind of airy, whipped type texture from everything that I've experienced in the line so far. And as someone that has issues with like texture and whatnot, that, that's a kind of a big thing for me. Oh, and another one too. I only have one item here as a placeholder, but Honest Beauty, you guys, I was so impressed with them. This is their, I think the liquid lip. Yeah, this is their BFF liquid lipstick 
fantastic, very fantastic formula. They also have regular lip crayons, sheer lip crayons, and I loved, loved them all. So I wanted to give another honorable mention to them because Honest Beauty, uh, I feel like they're kind of like an underrated lip type situation. Like, why, why don't more people talk about them? They're, they're so, so damn good. And I personally really enjoyed them. And those lip crayons, like, normally I'm not a lip crayon kind of lady, but like, y'all got some damn nice lip crayons, the sheer ones or the regular. Fucking beautiful. Of course, next up, you know, we got to talk about none other than little Mr. Wayne Goss. Again, slaying the game. I picked up his entire lipstick launch set. He came out with, what was it? I think eight shades of lipstick, like the bullet formula. He came out with six or eight glosses and then four or five lip liners. And I love the shades that he came out with. They're all in like that pinky nude kind of family. And they're all super beautiful. I will say for me, I think the best formula that he came out with in terms of lips was his lip gloss. This one is in the shade Antique Rose. And it's probably the one that I wear the most. It's like a nice champagne sparkle shade and it just pops so beautifully on the lips. It looks amazing. I also want to give a little attention here. This was definitely like the year of the gloss for me, but the Pat McGrath glosses, this one is in the shade Flesh 6 and this is their Lust Lip Gloss. And I freaking love this shade. This is the one that I am wearing today over top of that Patrick Ta liner. And I just love this color so much. Like I love the formula of Pat McGrath. Of course, you guys know this. Um, and I feel like the the texture and the colors that she kind of curates, the way everything pairs together, it is super duper beautiful. And if you've never checked out her lip stuff, whether it is the lipstick, the glosses, it's it's all a safe bet, okay? It's great. Oh my God, especially, how could I not mention her lip liners? It's probably, were they in my 2019 favorites? Maybe that's why. Uh, but her lip liners, if you haven't checked those out too, oh my God, they are so, so beautiful. Highly recommend. I love, love the lip products from Pat McGrath. And then of course, all of this is culminating. I did all of these out of order, by the way, but the last, the final lip product that I have in this box is from none other than Buxom. You guys, I gotta talk about these. These are their full force plumping lipsticks and I am freaking obsessed. Okay, you know I love the Buxom lip liners. I love the Buxom uh, lip polishes and the glosses and all of that. The white Russian. Oh my god, we've talked about it all. But this, finding these, okay, this year, experiencing this lipstick for the first time. This is actually in the shade Goddess and this, oh my god, I have beat the living piss out of this shade, you guys. I love this lipstick so much. I don't care what color you fall in love with, bitch. They are all fantastic. All right, you guys, I think that is everything. I am like, I am thoroughly exhausted. I have been filming and talking nonstop for like, what, an hour and a half at this point. I have no idea how I'm gonna edit this. Don't forget too, to let me know whatever your favorite was, whether it's something in this video, something different, because I want to hear from you. What was your favorite high-end makeup product of 2020? Or maybe if you have a couple of things and you wanna leave them down in the comments, like I'm never against to hearing more favorite things, uh, you know, especially if you got them. By the way, make sure when you're leaving those, be specific, okay? Make sure you're leaving me your high-end makeup favorites if you have any because coming next week yeah next week um you will be seeing my drugstore favorite makeup of 2020 i do go through yeah like i said guys i take these seriously okay i break them apart and i really like to keep everything nice and individualized i want to say thank you all so much for sitting through this if you made it to the very end guys i mean you you can comment penguin or something because damn but anyways you guys i just want to say thank you so much 2020 was a hell of a year this video is super long so i'm not going to get into my little spiel but um thank you guys all so so much for being here for sitting through for, for sitting through this video if you made it all the way to the end you are a fantastic human being with so much patience because I talk a lot. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much for, for watching. Again, as I said at the start of the video, if you haven't done so yet, you can subscribe, turn on your post notifications, follow me on Instagram. Everything would be greatly appreciated. Everything, anything, whatnot. Uh, if you want to shop any of this, of course, my links will be down below. They are commission links, so they do support me, the channel, um, via a small commission. So keep that in mind. And of course, you can check out Fabletics, which again, I will have that link down below as well. I'll also have my Amazon storefront down there. Oh, and don't forget too, I do have a PO box now for those of you that were wondering uh, that will be linked down there or you know not linked it'll be typed bitch I can't link to a PO box what am I saying um but yeah all the information check the description box and I thank you guys all so so much for watching please don't forget to have an amazing day night weekend whatever it is when you're watching this and I'll see you in the next one bye